is Heart Rhythm TV, and I am Julie Shea here with another episode of Advancing Allies. We're excited to share a new series this year entitled AP Spotlight. This series aims to highlight our diverse ally professional members, which make up about 25% of the overall Heart Rhythm membership. This includes nurses, cardiac technicians and technologists, advanced practice providers such as nurse practitioners and physician assistants, uh, genetic counselors, pharmacists, um, psychologists, and other non-clinical positions such as biomedical engineers, research assistants, and EP administration. Our allied professional group brings a diverse set of skills to the care and management of patients with heart rhythm disorders. I always like to say EP is a team sport because we work collegially with our physician colleagues to provide highly specialized care to this unique patient population. So I am excited to introduce our inaugural guest today, Dr. Kristen Campbell. Dr. Campbell is a clinical cardiac, cardiology pharmacist and senior research associate at Duke University Hospital in Durham, North Carolina. Kristen, welcome to AP Spotlight. Thank you, Julie. Yeah, so glad to have you here. Um, so can you tell me a little bit about yourself and why did you want to become a pharmacist in the first place? Sure. Um, so I work in um, EP at Duke and um, my origins in pharmacy really dated back to uh, my dad. He worked in the pharmaceutical industry and he was the one who introduced me to all of the um, different opportunities that PharmDs have. Um, I've always really liked the idea of working in medicine and healthcare and helping patients. But what really drove me is, is doing the things that help patients feel better. And so really focusing in on the treatment and, um, you know, pharmacists are integral in that decision-making process. So that's how I got here. Absolutely. So how did you get involved in electrophysiology? So I did in pharmacy, um, you can do residency training after graduation and um, you do a general year and then you can do a PGY2 specialized year. And I did that in cardiology and um, then went over to Duke and uh, was working um, in gen med and cardiology. And the, actually the chief of EP at the time uh, reached out and said that they needed a pharmacist. And um, I was really excited to step in. And, you know, Duke is a little bit unique um, in that we have a rounding inpatient service. There's not a lot of EP practices that are set up that way. And so uh, we, you know, they wanted a pharmacist to be part of that team. And um, I just jumped in and now I have multiple roles within the division. Yeah, I mean, I think it's such an important role within um, electrophysiology you know, as it pertains to, I mean, there's so many medications that we use, right, for yeah. both rhythm control and rate control, and a lot of those requiring titration and ongoing monitoring. So mm -hmm. kind of the pharmacy rule actually, you know, plays an important niche in, in all of this management. Um, yeah, I was really fortunate because the, um, the chief of the division, when he reached out, um, you know, he made the statement that really struck me at the time that he, he said, you know, definitely in all of cardiology, and really likely in most areas of medicine outside of oncology, we are using some of the most dangerous drugs in EP. Right. And so why would we not want to have a pharmacist? And, you know, that was, that was just really, um, I thought really insightful and, you know, a, a good valid point. <laughs> so. No, absolutely. I mean, like our long QT patients, you yeah. know, just have to worry about what they're getting exposed to, exactly. you know, like antibiotic, um, prescriptions from their primaries, you know, no harm intended, but, you know, right. you know, having somebody that's kind of overseeing that I think is, is very important. Um, so what do you find that's uh, unique about your role um, besides kind of the things that we've already chatted about a little bit? Yeah. So I'm very fortunate to practice in North Carolina, which is a very progressive pharmacy state. And so I have the ability, if RMDs have the ability to get a clinical pharmacist practitioner license, which allows us to create a protocol and manage patients, um, you know, in, in a similar way to a nurse practitioner or a physician assistant agreement. Yeah. And so I do have a clinic as well and um, monitor patients on these antiarrhythmics. You know, a lot of our patients are defetilized, sodalol. They need to be seen really regularly uh, for labs and EKG checks. They don't need to see 
the physician, the attending, you know, for that visit. And um, it's a really great opportunity for me to remind them of the things that you just pointed out, like drug interactions and things like that, just as a touch base for them. So um, I'm really proud of that accomplishment and, and practicing in North Carolina is really helpful to that again, because it's so progressive. And then um, just working on the inpatient side, I've had a great opportunity of being a liaison for our EP lab and helping to make sure that our patients that are getting procedures are safe. So, you know, anticoagulation policies, um, all, all different types of things to um, promote safety in that area. Yeah, that's great. Our, uh, at the Brigham, we have um, our anticoagulation uh, team is mostly pharmacists, mm -hmm. and they've also started doing rate control with patients. So oh, wow. um, being able to uh, monitor them, those patients that are in both both arms, either rate or rhythm control, but to make sure that they have adequate um heart rate control and their meds are titrated properly. Yeah. So they do that. And they also do similar with the anti-arrhythmic follow-up in terms of ECG monitoring as well. Yeah. So, you know, I think this is a hugely untapped field for clinical pharmacists um, that I hope to see continue to progress um, as we move forward. Um, you know, certainly the environment, the work environment that we're in now kind of post COVID, if we're really actually ever going to be post COVID, right. but, um, you know, it's really changed the landscape of how we, how we manage patients. So sure. it's, it's super, super exciting, I think. Um, so what, what other benefits do you think specialized pharmacists provide to EP care? Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, the, just the specialized care that I, with those unique patients, like you mentioned with long QT and patient education, um, as well as, you know, I do a lot of drug interaction, risk benefit um, scenarios with my physicians. You know, we have a lot of complex patients that you know, have a lot of, of needs for different medications. And so really weighing those pros and cons and making sure that they're monitored closely is something that I, I really you know, think is valuable to all of our patients at Duke, um, not just our EP patients, but, you know, I, there's a lot of transplant, um, a lot of oncology, those types of things that I get to weigh in on, which is uh, a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, I think that's great that you get to go around with the teams and, and really be an integrated part of the healthcare team. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's um, interesting um, that I was going to mention about um, AF clinics. Do you have an AF clinic at your institution? And, you know, I can see certainly a pivotal role for the pharmacist within a an, uh, specialized AFib clinic. Yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. I, I work with, um, you know, obviously all the physicians, but all the APPs and um you know, I'm happy to serve as a resource for both the inpatient and outpatient environment. It's it's uh, a lot of fun. That's great. Well, Kristen, thank you so much for joining me this evening as our inaugural guest of AP Spotlight. Yeah. And I uh, appreciate your time. And we thank our listeners for joining us as well. And please check out our YouTube channel for more AP Spotlight updates. Thank you so much.